Hello, welcome to United Charismatic Healing Ministry. This is Pastor Eddie Cochrane, your regular host. Uh, on the other side of the line, be an encouragement and a blessing to you. Uh, it's my prayer that God will minister to you and God will speak to you because He knows where you are, He knows what you're going through, and He's the only one who can minister to you His infallible Word, the Word that is ever powerful, the Word that is able to deliver, the Word that is able to heal, the Word that is able to restore, the Word that is able to encourage and to build up. It is my prayer that you will receive His Word this afternoon and be encouraged and your faith be built up so that you can do exploits for the Lord. The Bible says, They that know their God shall be strong, and they shall do exploits. This afternoon, I'm entitled my message, The Scripture, GPS for Life. The Scriptures, GPS for Life. It is the Scriptures that, that gives us direction, and order our steps, and leads us, and guides us throughout life. So if you ask, you allow the Scripture, or the Scriptures, to lead and guide you, it will direct you the way God wants you to go. In Jesus' name. In Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. To lighten our path and to lighten our way we walk in. And it's a light unto our path. So as we allow the word of God to lead us and to guide us, it will not lead us in darkness, but it will lead us in light. Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. And as we walk in His Word, we walk in the light. Proverbs 6, and 23 says, When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you are awake, they will speak with you. For the commandment, for the commandment is a lamp and the law a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Says the word of God, as we roam, will lead us. And as we sleep, he will keep us. The word will keep us. And when we are awake, the word will speak to us. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. As we get instructed by the word of God it will lead us in the way everlasting the way of life that we might have life and have it more abundantly but we have to allow the word to grant us that direction to give us that GPS we need in life the Lord knows he's been here he's walked the walk he's talked the talk he's been through well, all that we are going through today he's been through without sin so he's the right person to lead us and to guide us if you know somebody who's been to a place and is very cumbersome with that place, it's the right person to give it, be your guide because he knows how to go about. He knows to man, how to maneuver the directions and the places to go. But if you have somebody who does, who's never been there, then you guys, both of you, will start exploring, and you can you can lose your your GPS. You can lose your your direction. You can go to the wrong places and have to come back and start all over. But when you have somebody who's already been where you are trying to go to, he's the right person. And the Word of God is the right way to be able to lead us and guide us and direct us throughout this life we live. The Bible says in Second Peter 1.4, says, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. It says, through the word of God, we have been able to be delivered from destruction, delivered from lust, delivered from all kinds of negativity, so that we might be able to Partake of the divine nature, the nature of God. Be able to love, be able to forgive, be able to show mercy, be able to stand and pray for others. That is the divine nature of God. The Bible says He's our advocate, He stands in the gap for us, He's our lawyer, our mediator between God and man. He stands in the gap and intercedes on our behalf. He sheds his, his love for us. 
he demonstrates his kindness and his goodness in our lives and he wants us to be able to receive his light so that we can walk this path in the light of the lord without him we will walk in darkness because the bible says he is the light of the world he is the light of the world in john chapter 8 verse 31 32 says then jesus said to these to those jews who believed him if you abide in my word and my, you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free it says if you abide in god's word then you are true disciples of the lord you cannot live anyhow and do what you like and expect to be to be loved by god it says if you abide in his word if you obey the word of god if you obey the scriptures if you obey god's instruction and god's direction then you are his disciple and because you are his disciple he will make sure that his truth will set you free from anything that will contaminate you anything that will fight against you the lord will make sure you'll be free from those things he says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so as we study god's word as we read god's word as we obey god's word as we live according to the leadings and the direction of the lord we are walking in the light and because we walk in the light no darkness will cause us to stumble but when you're walking in darkness you don't know where you're going and you are blinded by the darkness so you can stumble and fall but when you're in the light the falling is not part of the equation the lord who is able to keep you the lord is able to protect and preserve you the lord is able to uphold you with his mighty right hand and keep you from falling and present you blameless before his presence and before his coming I want you to understand that the GPS, the scriptures are our GPS in life. As we walk by the word, as we obey the word, as we are led by the word, we will walk in the light of God. And the Lord will direct us and lead us and guide us. And we would go and receive that which God has promised us. Because the Lord will lead us there. Amen. Psalm 37 verse 23 says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. The steps of a good man. Who is a good man? A born again Christian, a child of a living God. We are not good in our own self. We are good because the good Lord lives in us. He makes us good. So the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Amen. He instructs you. He, uh, he leads you. He guides you. He causes his GPS that is in you to direct you and to order your steps. So when you're committed to the Lord and you're dedicated to him, you will not fall short. You will not walk in darkness. You will walk in the light of God. And there will be no stumbling. There will be no falling. And there will be no disaster your way. If he comes, he will give you the strength. Bible says there is no temptation that has come unto man that is not common to man. But any temptation that comes our way, the Lord says He will help you to, to withstand it. And if you realize you're not able to withstand it, He will make a way of escape for you so that you can come off under that temptation. Praise the Lord. God will make a way for you where there's no way. He will open doors that have been shut before you. He will guide you and direct you and lead you. He will order your steps into greatness, into abundance, into victory. And to breakthroughs, he will order your steps. Just depend upon him and rely upon him because he's dependable and he's reliable. He's trustworthy. As you give your life to him completely and obey him and obey his instructions, you will see his glory. You will see his power at work in your life because he wants to bless you beyond your imagination. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. I will instruct you and I will teach you the way that you should go. And he says, I will guide you with my eyes. The Lord will never leave you. The Lord will never forsake you. As you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another. But if you walk in darkness, he is not in darkness. God says there's nothing dark in, in him. There's no darkness at all in him. 
All that is in him is light. So as you walk in the light, you have fellowship with him. Praise the Lord. Psalm 23 verse 3 says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He is the restorer of our souls. And he is the leader of our lives. And he leads us in righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. He doesn't do it because of us. Because if he's going to do it, because we'll fail him. He does it because of his name. That in the name of the Lord be honored. Praise the Lord. God is good. He is merciful. He is gracious. He is kind. He is generous. As He leads us, He will lead us into abundance. He says, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He says, I have come to lead you into prosperity, into, into, into greatness. I have not come to put you down. I have not come to cut you off. I have come to take you in so that you will possess your possessions. He wants us to have all that He has promised us. But we can only have it as we, we are led by His Spirit, as we walk before Him, as we do His will, as we obey His Word. His Word leads us. His Word guides us. His Word directs us. And His Word instructs us. So as we obey the Word of God, it becomes a, a direction, a GPS for us in life. Because every manufacturer has, has a blueprint. Every manufacturer has a, a, a manual. And God also has a manual for His children on it. And as we obey the manual and do accordingly, all that God has promised us will come to us. I have no doubt about that. He's not a man to lie, neither the son of man to repent. What God says is well able and capable of bringing it to pass in our lives. Nothing is too impossible for him. He said, with God, all things are possible. He makes the impossible possible. What looks impossible with man is possible with God. Because what puts us down, what limits us, does not limit God. We have gravity. And when you jump, you will realize there's gravity. It will bring you back down. But when Jesus was leaving this earth, he jumped and gravity could not pull him down. He walked on water and gravity could not pull him into the water. So what, what brings us down, what limits us, does not limit God. So as you put your hands in God's hands and walk with Him, and He directs you, you always come to the place where you, you, you'll be able to, to deprive gravity from operating against you. Because there's coming a day when the church will be raptured. And if, if you have not come to the place where your faith is increased enough to be able to, to be caught up, the gravity will pull you down. That is my prayer that we'll get to that place, that our faith will be level, our faith will be there on the same level, our, our, our expectation will be on the same level, that we'll be doing what God is expecting us to do, and we will receive that which He has for us. That we'll be able to be raptured. Because it takes faith to be raptured. I said, whatsoever we ask, if we believe we have received it, it shall be ours. As we pray, so let us pray for grace and the faith to be able to be raptured. From this earth because very soon soon and very soon the lord will be coming back for his church and we should be ready expecting him to come and as we expect him to come let's be ready and have that faith that when he comes we will go with him when he shows up in the sky and he appears we will be caught up with him the bible said within the twinkling of an eye we'll be changed this corruption will put on incorruption this decay, body that will decay, will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and will put on the body that will not decay, the body that can, that can go through buildings, can go through walls. Because when the disciples were, were together in the place when Jesus died, when he was coming to see them, the Bible said they were just sitting down, the doors were closed, he just entered. So with that body, that glorious body, there's no limitations. It is my prayer that the Lord will bring you to that place. That when He shows up, none of us will be left behind. It is my joy to share these things with you. And I pray that the Lord will give you understanding as to what we are sharing. And take you deeper as you study His Word. God bless you mightily. I will end here and we'll continue next time.
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. And may the peace of God that transcends all understanding be your portion from today till eternity. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. If you are sick, may the Lord heal you. If you are if you are in, in any kind of trouble, may the Lord deliver you. If you are bound, may the Lord set you free. Whatever it is that is fighting against you, I come against in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will bring about liberty and healing and restoration in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you mightily. I love you very much and I know God loves you more. God bless you. I'll see you next time.